Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Ina Kuznetsova. Good morning. So we have a fine tradition at Red Hat meetings of who can spell my name the best. <laughs> so after you have your first cup of coffee and start kind of opening your eyes and talking to people around, you can start practicing. And I think the fact that so many people showed here 8 o'clock in the morning to listen to keynotes is the best validation of how important open virtualization is. So thank you very much for being here today. And I also want to say that I'm especially proud to speak at Red Hat Summit in particular this year, because 2011 is a very special year for IBM. This year is our centennial. I know some of you think that companies do not live that long, and in fact, <laughs> none of our competitors even 50 years ago are no more, right? But we're still alive and kicking. And in this 100 years, we became, we went all the way from a small business uh, selling clocks and scales and tabulating machines to become an enterprise with 400,000 employees and a solid future for the vision. And this 100 years has been full of stories and anecdotes and iconic moments that highlight our pursuit of knowledge, our faith in science, our firm belief that together we can make the world better. And let me just remind you a few of those that you may know less. Um, 1944, Watson Computing Lab is open in Columbia University. It was the first time ever when a corporation opened a lab totally dedicated to academic research. So for the first time, the scientists used tabulating machines and then computer equipment later, not for accounting purposes, but to calculate the moon's orbit. And as we all know, IBM supported the launch to the moon with uh, information technologies years later. Today, eight of IBM labs are engaged in collaboration with government and academic institutions worldwide, working on various uh, pure scientific tasks. So we expand our reach, we get access to the best talent, and we share, which is one of the most important principles of the community. We share uh, our knowledge. Well, good history and uh, innovation and making the world better start with treating your employees with respect. And IBM has a great history in that direction as well. 1914, long before Disability Acts, we hired our first handicapped employee. 1939, we brought a blind psychologist from Harvard who later laid out the program for hiring 180 handicapped employees. And they developed a program of adopting IBM equipment for the needs of handicapped. And in the modern world, we all heard of voice recognition and additional things done to enable everybody to participate. Enabling everybody to participate also has a story which is very dear to my heart. 1944, Ruth Leach became the first ever woman vice president of an American corporation. It was IBM. So uh, we have really have a history not only in technology but in human, uh, in, um, human aspects of the world and building the history as we go. Many of you know of IBM PC, right? A very famous machine, cost $1,500, launched in 1981. Just a year after its launch, it became the person of the year on the cover of Times Magazine. I think it was the first time ever the computer was the person of the year. Well, not many people know that we invented other technologies which may not have the direct implication to IT, but make the world better. That same year, 1981, our scientists developed a laser that allows you to take parts of human tissue without affecting neighbor areas. Implication, laser technology, right? The operation to get people eyesight back. Lots and lots of great stories, and of course, I would not be uh, covering innovation in full if I would not mention one of those icons that you can see on the screen that is very, very special for this event, our investment in Linux. In the year 2000, we announced a $1 billion investment to make Linux better. Not only it helped to make Linux better and several hundred developers we put on it helped and our participation community helped, but it also attracted attention to the, of the CEOs and CIOs of this world. And 
as a result, really helped to drive Linux adoption into the enterprise, eventually contributing to Linux becoming one of the highest growing operating systems in the world. And of course, speaking of the very latest development, there is another computer who has all the chances to become a person of the world because it thinks like a human. It can distinguish between meaningful and non-meaningful content. It's the computer called Watson, which we demonstrate over here on the demo floor. You can stop by, ask a question, have a chat. Uh, it's self-learning, it recognizes human speech, and uh, it was a star on Jeopardy in this February. So we continue, uh, we continue our journey uh, of innovation. Now, a lot of you, a lot of you know about uh, our participation in, in Linux, but uh, not, uh, you know, our participation in open source spans well beyond that. And we participate, for example, in such projects as Apache Foundation and Eclipse Foundation. Let me just name a few projects. Um, in Apache, uh, Apache Derby, uh, the project to create a relational database with a small footprint, uh, totally written in Java. It started with a contribution of code from IBM, and IBM remained a very active uh, participant. Uh, in uh, Eclipse, uh, uh, Eclipse Higgins, the new project to give users more control over their personal information. Such projects as uh, Java ID and, um, sorry, as, as Eclipse ID and J Java ID and um, Eclipse uh, rich, con rich Media content, which is used today in such IBM projects uh, and products as Lotus and Lotus Symphony. So we do not only contribute uh, to the uh, community, we also use the products developed in community. So speaking of Apache, for example, Apache Hadoop, uh, the highest scalable uh, um, computing environment, this is uh, used in Watson, right? Um, OIM is used in Watson for uh, managing unstructured information. So uh, we do not only contribute to the open source communities, we also bring the products from those communities and use them uh, in what we develop. You cannot just be a part of the community and miss the leaders in the community. Not only we became an active corporate user of Linux, not only we became one of the active developers of Linux, we became partners with the leaders in Linux community as well. February 1999, we signed our first alliance agreement with Red Hat, and we have been partners ever since. And partners means going way beyond joint sales and marketing and bringing products to market. We do development together. We partner in developing such technologies as uh, real-time Linux, as um, virtualization and KVM. We test our products in early versions. So whenever we have new hardware developed, Red Hat becomes one of the first companies to test it. Whenever Red Hat has a new version, we become one of the first companies uh, to, to, to test it on our equipment. And uh, of course, we have uh, ongoing collaboration and we use each other products. So we say that IBM runs on Red Hat, Red Hat runs on IBM. Even Red Hat Desktop is very popular. We have 25,000 users of Red Hat Desktop alone, not to mention multiple projects built on Red Hat server. So I'm really looking forward for this partnership to continue. And today we'll talk about some of the recent products of this partnership that help the adoption and hopefully will help even more uh, uh, in adoption of open virtualization. So this partnership is important not just as a tribute to the organizers of this event, it's important because this is the foundation of making open virtualization set in, um, in enterprise and data center. We are not new to virtualization as well. In fact, the first hypervisor was launched by IBM before I was even born in 1967. And, uh, and I'm sure lots of you can say the same. Uh, so uh, it was the hypervisor for Systems 360. And eventually, a lot of our mainframe customers started using virtualization. And today, a lot of our customers virtualize mainframe on Linux. So for example, uh, Coming back to the story of my last name, I have to mention at least one Russian customer, right? I'll choose a big one. Bank of Russia saved 400 million over three years on transaction processing by virtualizing and consolidating their distributed system on two mainframes running Red Hat Linux. And two mainframes are there for security reasons. They're a thousand miles apart in case of a natural disaster or force major. 
So uh, this is a good example. We have other joint customers of the same size or scale, uh, Bank of New Zealand, for example. So this, uh, this trend continues. Then in 90s, IBM brought virtualization on mid-range and we virtualized power. And again, today, a lot of power systems host multiple uh, environments, multiple operating systems, system I, uh, AIX, Linux, all running on the same server. And there are some very interesting customers like French Open who scale up a few times a year when they have events and then scale down and use virtualization very efficiently to manage their system at a low cost. Then going forward in uh, later 90s when the virtualization of x86 started, eventually it was a very painful process. So Zen used part of virtualization, modifying operating system to make it work. But then in 205, AMD and Intel both added the support for virtualization to their hardware. And that became a pivotal moment because it allowed to run the virtualized environments much faster. At around the same time, the development in open source started. So the KVM community started to form and uh, it was led by a company called Kumranet who leveraged Linux uh, to uh, develop uh, KVM and open source uh, technology. And then uh, in uh, 2007, KVM became the mainstream, became a part of Linux. Uh, soon after, uh, Red Hat uh, bought Kumranet and has been carrying the flag ever since, really investing resources and expertise and driving the adoption of KVM technology through Linux products. And IBM uh, joined as well. In fact, we, in 2009, we significantly increased the number of developers in our labs we have uh, working on KVM. Uh, we have one of the industry largest teams working on KVM today. We have over 60 programmers uh, working just on KVM. So we truly believe that this product, uh, this technology will continue, uh, that the ecosystem around KVM will grow and that we will see the same revolution around open virtualization as we saw around open source in the turn of the century, when the investments and support from big companies helped to drive it into the big data centers, into the mainstream, and as a result, attract talent, attract resources, and make the technology better. Why open virtualization is important? Right? You can say, well, we have enough of products in the market. A lot of answers are the same as uh, we have been giving for many years about why open source is important, why Linux is important. So I don't think it will be new and I think it will be very clear. Three things. First of all, choice is good. When you have a technology available from multiple sources, there is a natural competition that makes it better and better. There are more people involved, there is more talent involved. Today you can get KVM as a part of RHEL, you can get it in a stripped down version as REV. You can get it in different ways, and this is the foundation of this technology going forward and developing well, because it's, devel it's, it's available from, from multiple, uh, multiple sources, and nobody gets locked in. Second, lower costs, right? No license fee. Uh, you can get REV without license fee. You can get uh, KVM as a part of REL, so it's included in your current subscriptions. Again, great economy, right? We have um, customers. Uh, who did business cases and the general opinion is that they save about 50% uh, over three years on using open virtualization versus proprietary technology. 50% you know, is a lot of money to think about. And then the third very important point is interoperability. Today KVM can host multiple operating systems. You can host Windows environment, you can host Linux environment. And in fact we think that one of the groups uh, of customers who adopt KVM uh, among the first are those who run a mixed environment. There are lots of customers today who run some applications on Linux, some applications on Windows, so they are uh, the first who start to appreciate the advantages that open virtualization brings to them. What makes a hypervisor ready for prime time? So we come here to the main question of my presentation. And don't ask vendors, ask the customers, right? Uh, the customers drive this uh, evolution today. It's the customers who tell us what they need. So just a few months ago, we got 40 customers at uh, IBM Pulse event and we asked them that question. We let them talk and we listen, right? And then later we followed up with a mini jam. So those of you familiar with IBM know that now and then we run those online discussions which are very popular. It's like a collective brainstorming of thousands of people. 
And we get a lot of good ideas through those mini gems as well. So we run a mini gem on what makes a hypervisor technology ready for the data center, ready for prime time. It all boils down to three things. Performance and scalability, security, especially if you talk about multi-tenant environment and quality of service, and virtualization management. Um, there is a quote from Cortal Consource. Cortal Consource is a subsidiary of uh, BNP Paribas. They have, it's a financial company with about one million customers. They just recently switched to a consolidation on KVM technology, on RHEL, on IBM hardware platforms, and they switched from proprietary technology. So what do they talk about? They talk about great performance. They talk about fully meeting their needs with what they got with KVM. We have other joint customers in other sectors of economy. So Brazilian Highway Police, uh, Brazilian Federal Highway Police, just consolidated, also switched from um, proprietary technology, another case, uh, to uh, System X from IBM running Grillen um, KVM. What are they talking about? Saving money. They saved about 80% of costs by leveraging open virtualization. And let me tell you, it's a lot of taxpayers' money to better use when you talk about highway roads. So let's talk about why uh, we think that uh, the time for KVM has come and why we'll start seeing more customers like uh, BNP and uh, Brazilian Federal Police joining the ranks. First of all, it's the scalability and performance. KVM leverages the scalability of Linux that spans from wristwatches to mainframes, and uh, it leverages a lot of functions from Linux, so it doesn't have to reinvent it all. So the development goes fast, and scalability is there. But another very important point is the performance. So recently, we published uh, the, um, the spec word, uh, the test that shows the performance uh, of different uh, virtualization tools. And guess what? Uh, KVM uh, showed a much better performance, about 45 better percent better performance than the next proprietary competitor. It hosts 336 virtual machines in the test. So that really talks about the performance you may need for a data center and a better performance than uh, you know, what you can get otherwise in a proprietary source. Then there is security, and security is extremely important as well, especially when you start talking about cloud and multi-tenant environment and the necessity to protect the information. Well, KVM, again, leverages Linux, and as a part of that, it leverages uh, Linux SE, which is, um, SE Linux is technology developed by, uh, the, st the informational um, structure developed by uh, National Security Agency, and it allows multi-access uh, control. Uh, it allows good protection of information. I'm also very happy to announce that Red Hat and IBM are taking uh, KVM through the government certifications, through the common criteria, and we are right now in evaluation for E Alpha Plus level, which is the level of security protection that US government grants to technologies that are endorsed for informational exchange between highly secure government agencies. We have had bankers telling us if US government is good for this technology with EL4+, we're good with this as well, right? There's nothing can be more secure. Uh, so uh, as we know, WikiLeaks and such, this is the human error. This is not the IT technology issue, right? So in a technology protection, EL4+, grants the highest level of uh, information protection, and uh, we are looking forward to hear the announcement in the evaluation stage for that. We are developing uh, this uh, together, and this is another important statement. When you talk to analysts about why uh, KVM has not got a larger share in data centers, one of the first things they have been mentioning was the availability of systems management tools. Because in a data center, the cost of running the data center, the cost of managing system is very important. The ease of using uh, of managing system is extremely important. And it becomes key not just to the agility of IT system, it becomes key to the agility of the business price overall, to how fast a business can make changes to their IT system. So we partnered to make sure we have a full stack that uh, can offer those capabilities. First, you start with LibWord, which gives you the uh, remote uh, secure management versus command line. And then you can have graphical interface and uh, virtual machines management through RevM. 
And then if you install IBM Systems Directive with VM control, you can manage a uh, multi-hypervised environment. You can manage the heterogeneous environments, part of it may be virtualized on KVM, part on VMware. You can manage it from the single screen, right? From the, let's say, single pane of glass. Um, now, if you have a more complex data center environment, if you want to add automation, we bring in Tivoli products. Tivoli and Systems Director are developed in the same labs in IBM. So we make sure that there is no duplication of agents within the stack and the customer gets the smooth uh, running stack with less potential failure points. Uh, Tivoli offers such functions as automation on top of that. Tivoli offers assets management. Tivoli may offer you, if you have a data center with multiple um, vendors and multiple platforms, Tivoli will offer uh, managing the repository of virtual images across multiple platforms. So you can go as high as you need, depending on the needs of your data center. You can still work uh, within the stack. The most important thing to mention, though, is that Red Hat and IBM just made a very important announcement. We announced the collaboration in developing of systems management ecosystem around KVM and encouraging adoption of KVM by more vendors and developers and customers in the industry. And this work will start with development of APIs. This work will continue around libvirt collaboration. So we want to make sure that the customers get the full benefit of advanced systems management in their data centers and are fully confident that what they can get with KVM is the full value, incomparable, much better than what they can get from proprietary systems. So why all of this is so important? Because the virtualization is the first step towards the cloud. Not all our customers will develop the internal clouds very, you know, right away, but we have a lot, a lot of customers who are engaged in this process right now and who look at virtualization and then systems management and then processes automation as the big phases of their journey to the cloud. They just try to reap benefits at every step they go. But uh, to build the cloud, eventually you have to start right. If the virtualization is the first step to a cloud, then open virtualization is the first step to an open cloud. And this is where KVM comes in. It offers automation, right? So we talk about improved business agility, and we talked about reducing costs, and reducing costs is important. This is why people build the clouds today, to reduce the cost of the IT infrastructure and increase the speed with which they can make changes to the IT infrastructure, provision new systems, right? So uh, the whole purpose is there, and um, KVM helps to serve it with lower virtualization management costs, with uh, multi-tenant security built in. Standardization, another very important uh, part of building a cloud uh, and providing higher quality services. Um, KVM today supports both Windows and Linux environment. You can guarantee the quality of service for virtual machines. Uh, you have functionality such as setting the thresholds for memory and processes for each of the virtual machines. So you have some advanced functionality that really allows you to guarantee the quality of service in a much better way that you can do it with uh, other technologies. And uh, of course, virtualization always means doing more with less, right? Taking the cost out of the system. The cost, the economy of scale uh, through the unit cost on KVM is huge. We talked about the no license fee. We talked about the advantages our customers get. And the high density of virtual machines, right? Back to our performance discussion, 336 virtual machine shown in SpecWorth. Uh, again, is another way to reduce your cost. You can run more virtual machines on less service, and this is uh, good for our customers. So uh, in conclusion, just let me, let me leave you with a couple of thoughts, right? Open virtualization means choice and low cost, and low cost is very good for the customers, but choice is an equally important issue here, right? The customers do not want to be locked into proprietary technology. They want to have access to open standards. They want to know that as they make big changes to their IT systems, building the cloud, they stay in open environment. And we'll think that KVM is getting ready for business today with the performance and security and scalability and quality of service that it offers. And we will partner with Red Hat to make sure that we get more customers uh, to join and that the ecosystem of KVM will grow and that we will see the same thing that happened in Linux 10 years ago happening to KVM right now. Hopefully in a few years from now, uh, there'll be no need for anyone to come on stage and say, 
is KVM ready for prime time? Because there will be no doubt about it. It will be running in, in business centers in, um, in enterprise. So uh, we cannot do this alone. We cannot do this alone with Red Hat. There is a whole ecosystem and community joining around this idea. So please join us in KVM adoption, in KVM development. Join us in building ecosystem around a KVM-based systems management, because together we can build a smarter planet. Thank you.